So we have the third generation BDM030 PS5 DualSense controller and in this video we're going to do a quick teardown and I'll show you how to take it apart. So the first thing we want to do is identify that this is a BDM030 and one of the quickest way is if we could open these triggers and look inside. As we push on the trigger and if we see a spring there then that identifies that this is a BDM030. As we can see, the two other generations don't have a spring when you push on the trigger, but they have this graving inside the trigger that will identify if it's a 010 or a 20. And if we look in the back of each controller, we can see that there's different designs and different engravings in the back. Once we have identified that this is a 030 controller, we could go ahead and start taking it apart. Some of the tools you would need is a small Phillips screwdriver, a prime tool, and I'd also recommend you have some of these tweezers to get those smaller wires and inside of the controller. And I'll leave this link and everything else in the description with my affiliated Amazon link. So let's take this trim off. And we have two screws here. And we could also take off these triggers on top. and that it's going to expose one and two more screws. We have these two little tabs here we want to pull out and this will help us to peel the controller apart. I wanted to say thank you for all the support on this channel. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe. Here we could take the battery out. Next, the battery plate. And this is what you have here. You have your motherboard with the cables. And just to compare with the 010 and pretty much the same layout with the 020 with just a little bit slight different motherboard. We can see the difference in here as we have this different type of ribbon cable on the new generation 030 and here we have the more thicker ones and also you could see that the motherboard has a different design. We have these little chips here on this one there's no chips I believe they're on the other side. On the newer version, we see we have different wires here. We have yellow, green, black, and red. On the older versions, we only have the black and the red wires. Those are just some of the small differences we could see right away when we take apart the controller. So at this point, we could take these cables out. And we're just going to be taking off more screws now. We have four on this side and four on this side. Once those four screws are off, this comes off like this. And here, if we need to access the buttons, everything's right here. If we want to access these buttons to change them or to put on any clicky triggers, we could just do that. So this shell here, we have the joysticks. So if you have any issues with the stick drift this is where you would access the modules here and you would clean them or replace the potentiometers i made a few videos on that if you want to check it out i'll leave a link on above so on the older versions you see this main chip is right here this is probably the controller and as you can see on this newer version they placed it right here as we can see here in the older versions you have the logo here it says bdm010 and on the new version the sign is actually right here, BDM030. So if you're still not sure which controller you have, you could always take it apart and you look at the motherboard and that will give you a definite answer. Now we could take off the triggers. First, we're gonna take this case here that's on top and we're gonna just remove it. That's gonna give you uh, the mechanism here. Remove that as well. So I would say the triggers are much different than this one. That's the main difference. It's a whole new design. So these parts just come off right away. As you can see on the older ones, the triggers are, they don't have that bracket. It's a little bit different. So if you want to change your trigger, this is where you would do that. Now this is the circuit strip here with the buttons. 
So when you're pushing the button, it makes a connection here. And this connection goes to here. And then this connection goes to the motherboard. So if we, if we have an issue with some of the buttons, we could take the strip off actually and clean it. Or if we need to, we could replace it if cleaning doesn't work. So this is the main problems. If your buttons are not working on your controller, it's most likely this strip. And this strip is connected here to the buttons. So we could just remove this. We could see the sensors are on here also. Okay, now let's see if we could remove this part of the trigger. The plastic bracket comes off like that. Just have to look, give it a little tug. So these are the rumbles. The haptic feedback that you get from the R, R2 and R, uh, R2 and the L2 button. So this is pretty much the basis of the teardown. Now, you have your controller here, you access your analog sticks, you have your rumbles if you need to repair them. You have your circuit pad here uh, if you need to clean it, if your buttons are not working, or you could replace it. You have your triggers if you want to add different color triggers, take them apart. Uh, you have your controller shell here with the buttons. If you want to replace different color buttons, you could do that. And then you have your joysticks, you could also replace them in different colors, clear, blue. It's easy to take it apart, but it's much harder to put it together. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's take our... Once we have that placed back, we could uh, go ahead and assemble our trigger back together. First, we're going to take this part that fell off and we're just going to put it on top, line it up on this wheel with the grooves, so line it up with the hole once it's lined up. We're going to take our right trigger, the R2, and to put it back, we want to you see this part here that goes inside the trigger and make sure that the spring also goes inside the trigger so we line it up like this oh now the spring just came off so let's just put that back in real quick As I said, putting it back together is a little bit harder than taking it apart. Let's give it another try. So we just want to make sure that this spring goes inside. Okay, just like that. And we want to go ahead and put back the rod. And we're going to take our bracket and just put it back in. Line the bracket next to the holes. There we go. And we're going to do the same to the other side. Now we have both of our triggers put together. That's probably the most hardest part of assembling it back. We could start putting everything else together, okay? Now let's take our speaker and put it back in here so we don't forget it. We could put this aside for now. Let's just put back all of the buttons.
Now we'll put back the membrane. Okay, so once this part is put together, let's just go ahead and finish this part. And we could start putting back the ribbon cables. Now we want to put back the four screws on each side that we took apart earlier. All these screws are the same, so it doesn't matter which one's which. So I just noticed that the green wire came loose, so it's not a problem. We'll just solder it back. You just have to be very careful because as you can see these wires are very thin and they could come off pretty easy it doesn't take much so here we have one two three and four so i have my soldering iron here heating up to uh, 700 degrees just going to take this wire and strip it always need to have a backup plan First we want to melt this, once it's melted, apply some pressure. Easy peasy. So we're just going to tighten everything else with this bracket here. It's going to go on top. This is going to go here. Now we just finish up and put the remaining screws in. And now we just finish up and put the remaining triggers in. And finish up with the trim. And there we have it. Back as new.